So we are in Detroit, Michigan. We couldn't tell. I mean, it's not my hometown or home city, but it feels like it is. But uh, we're at the MGM Grand Casino, downtown Detroit, for the fund recovery charity event. Um, my buddy John invited me, Swadzinski Sports Management. Shout out, John. Great dude, represents a lot of athletes, helps them with putting together events and whatnot. And this is an event that he's working on. You can see on a screen from last year, Calvin Johnson was here. I don't think he's coming this year, which would be sick. I've never met him before. But Braylon Edwards, uh, Eric Kippel, Darren McCarty, and a bunch of other Detroit athletes. Did run into my boy Jason Cabinda today. That was pretty funny. Yeah. I don't know what to expect, but we're gonna grab some content. It's gonna be fun. This is a little different from what we normally do, so stay tuned. All right, so I didn't know this was gonna be part of it, but we have a uh, silent auction with a bunch of Detroit stuff. Some other cool stuff. We got Paul McCartney, John Lennon, Kobe and LeBron. This is pretty cool. Megatron autograph. This is the 84 World Series team. Some autographs on there. Who we got? Jack Morris, Willie Hernandez, Lou Whitaker, Hound Channel jersey, Aiden Hutchinson jersey, Dave Bing. And this is cool. Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb. Kid Rock from Detroit. Darren McCarty's gonna be here tonight. Forty Howe. Braylon Edwards is gonna be here tonight. He went to Michigan. Wolverines, Billy Sims. Got hurt too young. Billy Sims was great. Some other Tiger stuff. Denny McLean, Willie Horton. That's pretty cool. Cool stuff. at all the Jets I can tolerate but I'm a, I'm a diehard Lions fan okay and all the other Detroit teams not really a good pick by me because but the next year will be good hey every t every team has its day man yeah and they, they they improved themselves tremendously man so you just never know how do you feel about the Lions this year we are in Detroit so I gotta ask you no 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 I, I feel like they're they're, they're going to be better I mean they, they came out and surprised a lot of teams last year mm -hmm. 100% um, you know they got great coaching they, they got great players uh, and that's that's what it takes man the guys just having the confidence that you can win because sometimes exactly. teams don't have that you know so what's it like what's it mean to you to like be at an event like this like yeah you know? well um, Man, any event that you, that I can do as a, as a former player, uh, as a Hall of Famer that uh, can help society, I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. And I know that at this time, and even back when we played, man, mental health has always been mm -hmm. a big deal. Now, we didn't know it. It wasn't on it, it wasn't top of mind back yeah. when we played because we just, you know, told everybody to suck it up, you know, be a man, you know, you we'll talk about your problems. But uh, nowadays, that's, you know, it, does, it, it doesn't work. Exactly. You know, it doesn't work, you know. <laughs> so what do you think the most important thing is for someone that is experiencing, you know, some mental problems and stuff? What, what do you think the first step should be for them? To, uh, even even if you're not sure, because most of the time, you know, people aren't sure, yeah. is to make a phone call. You know, seek, seek help and, you know, don't be embarrassed because the people who are embarrassed, who act like this shouldn't be happening to me, those are the ones who suffer the most. Mm -hmm. You know, reach out. Um, my wife, she's a mental health counselor. So she, I get personal counseling. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, it, it's becoming more and more accepted and, you know, we realize that when we can talk about our issues. Yeah. Especially as men, because like you said, you kind of alluded to it. Oh, yeah. In today's world, it's like, it's more acceptable. Back then, it was, it Turns just wasn't, cry, it, yeah, it's, it yeah, just wasn't it like that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. D, is there, is there anything else you're looking forward to here at the event today? Uh, well, I'm, I'm always looking forward to seeing seeing the guys. Uh, you know, I, I got all the Detroit guys. Uh, Herman Moore is going to be here. It's pretty yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Herman's going to be here. I don't know if Megatron's going to be here or not. Um, but uh, you know, Andre Rising, uh, you know, quite a few guys. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that and you know, just us having a you know good successful event and uh, you know awesome. raising some, some funds to help help this cause. 
And uh, last question, because we got both Andre Ryzen and Herman Moore here. You played against both of them, correct? Uh, I don't think I played against Megatron. No, not Megatron. Not, not her, oh, my yeah, bad. Her, Herman, Herman, Herman Moore. Herman, what was, what was Herman? I don't know. Yeah, Herman. Herman what was his yeah. last year? I don't think I. I don't think I did. Andre Ryzen. I played against Andre. We okay. came out together. That's okay. my man. There. That's that's my guy. So so who who was harder to cover? Not even if you covered them, but one of your teammates, Herman Moore or uh, Andre Ryzen. They're both, both great. Both of them. Both of them. Both I mean, of them. yeah, because they both had. They were different, you know. Mm -hmm. Herman Moore, big, tall, strong. You know, the kind of guy that he was in the he's a he's an outside guy. You know, where you know if you don't get your hands on him at the line of scrimmage, he's gonna beat you and he's gonna out jump you. He's gonna do everything. You know, Andre Ryan, he's in the slot and you gotta yeah, you gotta be off the ball and you can't touch him. And he's coming off, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> and you, you fall into your knees, man. Uh, it was just both of them are great players, man. I really enjoy watching them play. And again, Andre and I, we, we came out together. Uh, we were great friends back in the day, and every time we see each other, we always just pick right back up where we left off. Should be here soon. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll be here. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll chop it up. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank pleasure, you. pleasure talking to you too. Yes, sir. All right, what's going on, guys? We're here today with Herman Moore at the Fund Recovery event. Now, Herman, what does it mean for you to be at an event like this? Well, it means a lot. You know, you want to always come back and support anything that is really uh, societal and anything that helps with communities, helps with people, enrichment of life. Uh, we talk about self-care, so this is important for me uh, because that's something I'm an advocate for. Mm -hmm. And when you when you do that, you look for events like this. So uh, one thing that I talked about Steve Atwater before was the way that you know kind of, times have changed a lot since you guys are playing in the 90s to, to 2023. So what are some things that you've seen change in terms of helping athletes, you know, helping out with their mental states and stuff like that? Uh, the biggest change is really dealing with the pressure. Uh, social media wasn't at the height that we have now. The ability to go out and not really understand how to uh, self-contain and how to self-manage is a big deal. And I think it, it allows too much vetting, it allows too much uh, venting uh, by the athletes versus understanding that you still need to have that one-on-one that -on -one conversation or that conversation amongst peers that will allow you to be able to talk about it in a, in a better way. So it doesn't get out of control. And uh, there's a lot of pressure that's yeah. out there right now. Big time. So uh, one thing, it's, I don't think really think it's a mental health kind of thing, but with James Williams getting suspended, you know, young stud coming off that injury with the betting and whatnot. How do you think a guy like that can handle this, you know, mentally? That's it's a big letdown to a lot of people but you can't let that affect you at the end of the day. You know, if you look at the situation that happened with Jamison Williams, I honestly believe it was an honest mistake. Uh, it was just a, a quick lapse of judgment and, you know, rules are rules. Yeah. And for him as a young player and also given the fact that he was coming off of a career uh, first year to where he was trying to get his feet up under him, uh, it will have a mental setback. But I think he has enough support and there's enough communication that happens between uh, he and his, his teammates as well as the organization that they should be able to keep him focused while he serves the suspension. 100%. And, and leading into this, you know, we got a lot of hype around the Lions this year. Everybody's saying it's not the same old Lions. I mean, how do you feel about the Lions going into this season? Well, I think the Lions coming into 2023 is going to be a little bit different. They're going to have uh, a lot of confidence. I think they're going to really feel good about the fact that uh, they've added some players that I think will be difference makers. And uh, when you do that, it, it boosts confidence. But I always caution uh, younger teams and younger players with every team gets the, the opportunity to add to their, their attack, to add to their team and their depth. So the Lions still have to go out and play. Of course. What do you think their best pickup was this offseason. It could be the draft, it could be free agents. What do you think is going to help them the most? Uh, I think, the, the, believe it or not, the biggest thing that they were able to do is re-sign some of the players that I think were key or give some extensions to those that uh, they need to have, have here long term. Uh, when you can solidify the team and you can solidify the core, it's easier to add on free agents and draft picks. But if you don't have stability there, it creates a problem. And not to mention, there's a lot of guys that were, you know, maybe on the way out or like, hey, I want to be in Detroit. I'm going to take a pay cut. I want to stay here. I want to play for Campbell. Isn't that, that's never really like happened here before, has it? It hasn't happened. I've seen it, you know, back in the 90s when we had our early runs after winning the NFC uh, Central Division and then also going on to the conference championship. Uh, players did want to come here. We did a great job of recruiting and, and bringing players from other uh, championship type caliber organizations. But uh, winning solves it all. Uh, this is a destination, a place yeah. that players want to come play. Coaches want to come coach. Yep. 
and uh, we're on the radar. If you, if, if you need any more uh, witness to that, the fact that they're opening up the 2023 season on Thursday night against Kansas City tells you everything. That's huge. I, hopefully, I'm going to be able to get to that game. I came to the uh, season opener last year. I mean, it was electric. We were in the game the entire game, lost by a field goal, the Eagles, but I mean, last season was absolutely insane. I'm looking forward to this year. I'm glad you are too. Um, last question for you. I, I got to ask you. What are your prediction? What's your prediction of the final record for the Detroit Lions in 2023? Oh my goodness, you put me on the spot. I, I, put you on the spot. I, 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 think, I think they'll go uh, 11 and six or 12 and five. Um, that seems to be the consensus. Yes. I think they they win the division. The division, in my opinion, is there for the lose. And uh, I, I think a first round uh, playoff game is in there in their grasp. It'll be a dream come true for a lot of Lions fans. I mean, I appreciate your time. Absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. in my home city of Detroit, Michigan. It's not actually my home, it's my home away from home. But we're back at, if you guys saw the last Detroit vlog, we're at Luton Sports Cards. My guy's in there. Uh, I took this trip, one, because you know we went to the charity event last night, which was awesome. Herman Moore, uh, Steve Atwater, and a bunch of other athletes were there. But that, that was just dope. Um, but yeah, we're here. I figured I'm gonna make a day out of it. The Tigers play tonight, I'll be at the game. And uh, let's buy some cards. We're gonna go check out the vintage vault claws and some vintage clothing. My guy's over there. Let's have a day in Detroit. Let's go. That's about as cool. Fro. I don't have the fro one, I have a different one. That's about as cool as I get. Appreciate that, thank I've you. I've been literally laying around. Uh, so this is cool. Um, I actually literally went to college with Guy Rutgers legend Ron Harper Jr. I did not know if he had any. I know we had Bowman U cards, but there he is in a Raptors uni. Are you? Love to see it. I like that. I'll take one. Yeah. Let's see what we do. And then the Jefferson patch auto up there. I know that's not a rookie. But. What is the Jefferson auto and you know how kids are? All right, so we got a big lot. Already made a deal. Just got a little bit more. DeAndre Swift is gone. He's not in Detroit anymore. So he took all the Swifts out of the case. Works out for me because he's in Philly now, so people still want him over there. And then he also he hooked me up with the 2012 Lions team set. My guy Javid Best, who else? Kevin Smith I loved. Nate Burleson was really cool. Kellen Moore was the last quarterback they drafted to develop. That's why I like the Hendon Hooker pick, because we haven't drafted a quarterback ever to like develop. Like That's a guy that might have a chance, God forbid he ever gets an opportunity. It's better than What's his name? Chase Daniel or Dan Orlovsky coming into a game. I love Dan though. Dan's yeah. a cool guy. Yeah. But it just feel it's just cool to like have a guy that could come in and like, you know, like a Dak Prescott could light the world on fire. Someone you don't need to play right away. Yeah. But I do love I don't wouldn't say I love Goff. I do like him. I respect him. He had a great year. He's a good guy. Oh yeah. So he was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah. He's very underrated. Sick. I'm not I'm sold that he's a good quarterback. I'm just not sold on the whole picture of him like winning a Super Bowl. He, like like we're gonna pay him what we paid Stafford. Yeah. Probably more. Because remember when we paid Stafford, he was the highest quarter highest paid quarterback in football. Now he's like not even top fifteen. We we started that. It's crazy. We'll see. I mean even like all those guys, like, you know, it's just keep re-upping and re-upping. I think this year in a scene, these quarterbacks are going to want shorter and shorter deals. So all, those all right, so just awesome. picked up this lot. It was about 2800 total. Some cheaper slabs. Nothing crazy. John Collins. Garrett Cole. This is a lot of stuff that are moving live sales or just back home in the shop. Some Tatum rookie relics. Bobby Witt. McGuire. McCaffrey. Mark Wahlberg. Uh, that's pretty cool. Pete Alonzo, absolutely, like, literally, actually filthy patch. Pickett Silver Auto, what else we got? Goldschmidt, Big Poppy, Lamar, Bart Monk, I love this because he's in a Jets uniform, he only played there for one year. McKenzie, it's my boy. Ripkin to 10. 
dual, I mean, two of the best Vikings, Randy Moss, Justin Jefferson, uh, Devontae Smith, Earl Campbell to 10, Vladdy, Vladdy, Jordan, Ant-Man, on campus, uh, Edward, uh, not Edwards, uh, Davis, game use Kobe, and uh, Jefferson Patch Auto. So some cool stuff here, Luton Sports Cards. If you're in the Detroit, uh, Clawson, Michigan area, definitely stop by. Good spot, ton of wax, and uh, good deals. They, they were the best team in the National League, now they suck again. I mean, they were supposed to be bad. 04 champs. Sopranos. You guys, what do you guys know about Sopranos? Best show of all time. 100%. Literally best show of all time. We're literally watching this George Lopez episode right now because Bobby Bacala is the oh, principal yeah. in it. Sopranos happened like, what is it, 40 minutes from us? Yeah. Not even. That's crazy. Did you see the, the promo that they did for it? How they had, uh, they rented a taxi and they left yeah. like an arm hanging out yeah. of the trunk and they drove it through Times Square and had like Sopranos coming. I think it was like Sunday on TV yeah, or whatever, but... I, I remember seeing that. That was fucking dope. I'm Time. picking up any Soprano shit I could find just because I love it. I picked up like a HBO hoodie okay. from like when they first released. Oh, this is cool. This is like a Jersey shirt. Phantom of the Opera. Oh, it's just cool. Reminds me of The Undertaker when he wore the mask for a little bit. I can't. I love Scooby-Doo. It's my guy. We just got this in and the... Betty uh, yeah, that's dope. That's sick.